Hello everyone and welcome back to Water Child Tarot. My name is Sarah and thank you for joining me for this look, this unfair comparisons video on two nature inspired decks that are not necessarily animal decks. Um, before we get started on the walkthrough, I just want to say welcome to all the new subscribers. Uh, I have been surprised that there have been a number of new subscribers to the channel over the last six weeks or so, especially because I've kind of not been putting out a ton of content, but I really appreciate you all being here. So thank you for that. And I also appreciate your comments on older videos. Um, some of you have been going back and watching my tarot numerology series and other series. So again, just thank you for being here and interacting with me. Uh, I do still pay attention to the channel, even though I'm not making a ton of content. And um, I, I still want to hear from you. All right, so let's get into this um, sort of un unfair comparisons. Again, this is inspired by a series that Mixtress Ray had done on her channel, just comparing different kinds of tarot decks uh, with each other, sometimes ones that seem similar or may have a similar theme or something like that, but different approaches. Um, I was inspired to do this because I got this deck, Tarot for the Great Outdoors, for a solstice gift this, uh, this December. And in some ways, it does remind me of what the guy in tarot is trying to do. I think the the strengths that these two decks share in common is that they show a wide variety of people um, in a wide variety of situations, and they tend to lean into a more numerological approach to the tarot systems rather than just straight keywords um, that don't have anything to do with each other. So to my mind, Tarot for the Great Outdoors could be a good replacement if you can't get a good copy of the Guy in Tarot. And for those of you who might be new or not familiar with this deck, the Guy in Tarot was originally published by Llewellyn and it came in a great big box. It came with this book, um, Journey Through the Guy in Tarot by Joanna Powell Colbert. Let me double check the publication on this. First printing, 2011, so not even that long ago. Um, but there was only one print run and it sold out and Llewellyn declined to republish it. And so Schiffer picked it up and they have a current, they're the ones that currently publish this in mass market. However, the Schiffer copy is really terrible cardstock. It's um, a much bigger card. It has big borders on the front. It has silver edging. It has very sticky, glossy card stocks. The cards clump together. And as you can see here, um, you might be able to tell that this is a slightly unusual shape anyway. It's a bit wider than a standard tarot deck. And so having that extra, you know, centimeter or so all the way around with the huge borders just really made it basically unshuffleable in a lot of people's opinion, including mine. So um, it's unfortunate that Schiffer kind of ruined this deck. There, there was also a limited edition larger version of these cards that was available directly from the author and artist, Joanna Powell Colbert. However, I believe she's sold out of that special edition as well. So you're left with trying to find an older Llewellyn copy that can go for sort of stupid money on eBay. Um, and I don't recommend really doing that. I was lucky enough to trade this copy with a friend of mine for something that she wanted that was also out of print. Um, and I actually have a backup copy of this as well. It's the only tarot deck that I have a backup copy of because I got wind of an estate sale that had a copy in it. And, you know, that person was, was being reasonable. I think I picked up my backup copy for around $45. So I've just been lucky that way. Um, but I know this can be hard to get. And so I was trying to think of, well, what could you get instead? And I think based on my readings this year um, so far with the Tarot for the Great Outdoors and its availability and affordability as a mass market deck, I think this one could be a really good choice. But I wanted to kind of look at them side by side because I haven't done this myself. Now, um, in contrast to the Guy and Tarot, the Tarot for the Great Outdoors just comes with a little booklet. It doesn't come with a full book, but I actually think this booklet is way more valuable than the big book that comes with this deck. As much as I love Joanna Powell Colbert's um, choices that she's made in the way she's represented the different cards in this deck, I don't really appreciate her writing. I think a lot of her descriptions are very 
new agey, very generic, very wishy-washy. Um, some of them are slightly culturally problematic. So um, I did a full review of this guidebook and I'll link to that in the uh, notes below and you can you can learn more about that but I don't really recommend this book. So I think Tarot for the Great Outdoors again just because this booklet is much more clear and concise and well written and consistent um, it doesn't have those problems and so um, it can be a great tool and as we get into the imagery I think it might be a big help especially if you're coming from a place of learning where you've memorized a bunch of RWS keywords. Again, both of these decks lean more into numerological associations, and I think this little booklet would be a great key to kind of help unlock that uh, way of thinking about the cards. And I'm going to try not to make this video two hours long, so I won't talk about every card, but we can just kind of look at them together side by side and see what choices each artist has made. Oh, that's what I wanted to do to um, tell you that this deck was uh, designed or conceived by J.Q. Gordon, and illustrations are by Sharice Stubber, um, who is a professional illustrator. She's done, um, I looked her up, she's done campaigns and um, illustrations for you know ma major brands and, and big campaigns that you may have seen, um, but I really like her, her artwork. All right, so here we go with card number zero, um, which in the Guy and Tarot is called The Seeker. Joanna Powell Colbert has renamed a few of the cards that you'll see as we go through. And then here's just given the traditional name, this, um, this deck does use traditional names for the Major Arcana. Um, and each Major Arcana is also associated with a U.S. National Park. So this one's associated with the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. And that's just a feature of this deck, of course, being the Terror for the Great Outdoors, that makes sense. Um, on the topic of cardstock, I will uh, do a shuffling demonstration of each of these at the end. So both of these are thin cards that are easy to shuffle and don't stick together. Again, this being the well in, the well in printing of this. I think what I appreciate about the Tarot for the Great Outdoors is that most of the characters are actively doing something. Um, this one being an exception, and it's interesting to me that uh, their poses are quite similar, even the way they're dressed is a bit similar. The Emperor in the Guy and Tarot was meant to be renamed as the Builder for this card. In the Guy and Tarot, you do tend to get closer up images so you can see more facial expressions, body posture, that kind of thing. I do feel like some of the uh, people are a little bit further away in the great outdoors and might be a little bit harder to read for that reason. I like this card a lot with just the lions and no human. And this hermit's kind of interesting. We get the idea of seclusion here with this cabin on a lake out in the middle of nowhere, but there's no actual person here. I like this hermit because he has a journal that he's writing in. And where some of the concepts I think are a little a little abstractly depicted in Terror for the Great Outdoors, like this idea of justice being a, a rock formation in balance. You don't actually see a person here. Um, I do think some of Joanna Powell Colbert's uh, visual ideas look, they sort of look 90s New Agey to me. Even though this was published in 2011, I think she worked on this in the 80s and 90s, and it took her a long time to do all the artwork. And, you know, this card, for example, I've seen called out by other people as kind of being, I don't know, just a little, a little cheesy, a little bit um, of a 
uh, collage in a bad way almost. Um, this figure's kind of glowing and looks sort of poorly superimposed on the background. Now, not many cards are like this in the deck. I think most of them are, are a little bit more skillfully put together, but I can understand why some people might struggle with this type of image um, just being a little bit too, I don't know, aggressively new agey in some way, or a little bit cheesy almost. Um, and I just don't think you have that problem here, although maybe you have fewer people and that could be difficult. In this deck, the number 12 card is called the tree. So the focus is actually on the tree, not on the person. And here again, we have the traditional, the hanged man, but he's not hanging, he's in a hammock. So he's chilling, the chilled out man. Similar imagery here for death. We have a corpse and a natural setting. And then here we have a skeleton and a natural setting. Temperance. This is a card that I struggle with a little bit with the rainbow and the angel wings. It looks a little bit too, I don't know, Doreen Virtue for me or something. I like this um, devil card. It's called Bindweed. Um, and I like this card better than, than this one, although this one's not bad. Here we have the lightning, and here we have the tower. And I believe Joanna Paul Colbert was working in a combination of pastels and colored pencil for her renderings. And this one looks like also mixed media, maybe acrylics and watercolors. Some of the backgrounds look like watercolors. really like this sun picture and this also reminds me of the fifth spirit tarot with people just enjoying uh, being out in the sun. And here we have the wands suit in the um, Guy and Tarot. The suits are renamed uh, by the element. So we have the fire suit. And then here in the Tarot for the Great Outdoors, it's the suit of sticks rather than wands. This is one of the more traditionally RWS kind of depictions that you'll find in this deck. Not very many of the cards are similar, um, but this seven of sticks or seven it reminds me of the seven of wands in the in the pose of the uh, person there. So here's a great example of the numerological association with the Eight of Wands. So instead of this, which sort of brings up that idea of swiftness, which is an RWS keyword, here we have Eight of Sticks and the Eights being about, for me, concentration. So the beaver going back over and over again to do a repetitive activity to build this dam and to concentrate resources into building um, the den and the dam here. So I like this kind of depiction. Here we get another kind of new agey um, image from Joanna Powell Colbert. And here we have uh, just a more modern image, nine of sticks and you know, 
planting trees together. And I did hear, I don't remember who it was, but I did hear, um, it might have been Ange, um, sort of complaining that, you know, this deck just depicts people doing activities and it doesn't really, um, you know, go with the RWS. And it's true that it's it's not like the RWS, but I do think the choices, if you read the booklet, um, are much better uh, thought out. So here we have renamed court cards in the Gaian Tarot. So the pages would be children of their um, element. And then here we still have the traditional titles. So, you know, I can understand someone wanting uh, familiar imagery, but to me, the, the whole point of owning multiple tarot decks is to actually get out of repetitive imagery and the same images all the time. You know, I can work with an RWS if I really want to have those poses and those characters doing those exact things, but I really like to have um, different kinds of poses and, and different kinds of uh, settings and actions that are going on. Um, here we have, so guardians uh, would be equivalent to queens in this deck. And what I like about Joanna Powell Colbert is that um, she has put uh, both male and female figures in the guardian and elder um, positions. So she's mixed up the gender representations in those positions. And I'll have to double check and look as we go through here to see uh, what this um, author has done. And so our elder corresponds with our king. Here we have our ace of water or ace of vessels as it's called here, ace of cups. As you might expect from Tarot for the Great Outdoors, all of our representations are exteriors. There are a few interiors in the Guy and Tarot, not very many, but there are a few. Interestingly, this one is a little bit more specific, this Five of Vessels with the uh, bird trying to warn off a snake from the eggs in this nest versus this five of water, which I interpret much more openly um, as to what this person is thinking or feeling in this situation. So I wanna just give you a flavor um, for each of the booklets that come with these decks, just so you can get an idea, especially with an image like this, where you're like, how is that the Six of Cups, right? There's, um, there's not necessarily, in either of these, a clear reference to the RWS image. So let's just quickly take a look at that. So for the Guy in Tarot, the image on the left, and the Six of Water, and this booklet does arrange all the numbers together. So you get all of the ones, all of the twos, et cetera, all the sixes are together um, in this book. And the main keywords for the sixes, according to Joanna Powell Colbert, are community, reciprocity, and peak experience. And she says about the six of water, Mermaid sisters gather together to celebrate the peak of summer as sunset falls on the longest day of the year. They are naked and innocent with hearts wide open to embrace each other. They weave a sensuous spellbinding web of love and pleasure as they sing, we are the flow, we are the ebb. They slip between the borders of earth and sea, night and day, human and fish, to the place where magic begins. Uh, when you get this card in a reading, you are opening your heart to close connections and joy as you circle with beloved friends. You bless yourself and each other as you are rocked and nurtured by Mama Ocean. Your tribe expands to include the four-legged, winged, finned, and flippered ones. At this magic time, you are fully in the present moment, having left all cares and worries behind. 
when you read the shadow side of this card, you may long to be part of a sisterhood or you may be nostalgically looking back on a time in your life when you were part of a community. You may be brooding on the past or worrying about the future and finding it difficult to stay centered in the present moment. Call your community to you even if you don't yet know who they are. Go to the water and cast your prayer upon the waves. And then an affirmation, I open my heart to all my relations and honor our connection. And so let's just see what J.Q. Gordon says about this manatee image here. So interestingly, they do not organize their booklet according to number. They do arrange it according to suit, even though they do use numerology. So for the Six of Vessels, representing growth and transformation, sixes help you learn from your mistakes. Florida manatees literally bear the scars of human mistakes as boaters often collide with these gentle animals in southeast waterways. But with the knowledge researchers have gained about the migration and habitats of manatees, boaters can more safely coexist with these curious creatures. Ponder the ways your own mistakes lead to greater personal awareness. And you'll notice this person's in a glass bottom boat and they have a paddle, so they're not using a motor and they're not going to um, therefore uh, hurt the manatees that, that you know, float near the surface. It's, it's motorized boats that um, hurt them with their propeller blades. So, you know, in this case, I think this one is actually more of a spiritual kind of card and might provide better guidance in a reading. Um, but you can kind of see where they each take from the number six and then the experience, the lived experience of what sixness kind of means to them in the situation. All right. Continuing on, we have seven. And again, I just like the action in, in cards like this. This is a very seven-y kind of card. It's like got a chariot vibe to me with them, um, you know, people parasailing and surfing and walking their dog and building a sandcastle and playing frisbee all going on at the same time. This guy's just drinking liquid. Um, so I think they each have their strengths and I like different cards for different reasons. Here we have an eight. And again, the page or child of water. The knight would be our explorer. Queen would be our guardian, and then the king is the elder. And I do think that both decks have a lot of good representation, both in terms of age, um, in terms of gender uh, presentation, uh, sexuality or sexual preference, um, and you know body type, and all kinds of things. Absolutely love this three of air. It's probably my favorite three of air, three of swords ever. And it is one of the few cards that's set on an interior in this deck. So we saw another nest, um, but it was a in the vessels um, suit in this card. So the water suit and here it's a nest with eggs uh, in the air. So you can see how the different artists are using similar imagery to represent different concepts. And again, I always find that interesting. And also which cards um, show people and which don't. It's not really depicted as clearly in the Tarot for the Great Outdoors, but she does mention how nines um, speak of exhaustion, exertion, you know, getting towards the end of a project, that kind of a thing. So again, I encourage you to read the booklet if you get this deck. 
um, or if you can preview it, uh, it might help some of the cards make more sense to you. And I, again, I saw someone um, wondering what was going on with this dynamite. It's someone t uh, proactively setting off an avalanche so that it won't happen accidentally at a later time. So using um, dynamite to create an explosion so that the snow will shed in a controlled way and predictable way um, for safety for uh, skiing and other uh, winter time activities. And I love that the Queen of Blades, Queen of Air, here is flying through the air on her snowboard. Super cool. And you may have noticed that all of the aces uh, in this deck depict a baby animal. I also just love this Two of Earth, probably my favorite Two of Earth I've seen in any deck. I really like this depiction too, making the best and enjoying a bad weather day when you're camping. I like how each of these is expressing sort of a teaching moment here. We have a, an older adult um, instructing a younger person to play a drum. And here we have an older um, couple of adults here looking on as this child is watering garden. Here in the Gaian Harrow, we've had a child of Earth in, in for a child in all of the um, page cards because they're renamed it as child. So you see a young, you know, sort of toddler into a young child kind of age, maybe anywhere from the age of two to about six or so. Um, if you go back and look at the different children depicted. What I appreciate about this deck is that here you have a page of stones who is an older person. So it breaks you out of that um, a kind of stagnant idea that pages always represent a younger person. They don't represent a younger person. They represent the mentality of being a younger person. They represent, you know, novice mindset or inexperience or innocence, something like that. So we can, we can have that kind of mindset or experience at any age in our life. And I appreciate that inclusion in this image. So there you have the two decks. As promised, I'll do a quick shuffling demo, talk about cardstock. So this deck here is typical Llewellyn cardstock of the period, which would have been again around 2011 um, or so. And I believe their cardstock is still similar. Um, however, because uh, this deck is wider than a typical deck, it is a little bit difficult to shuffle. And um, it also has a bow, so it does not snap back 
and if you if you shuffle always face down then you will eventually get a, a slight bow to your cards now this doesn't bother me but it may bother some people So I wouldn't call this difficult to shuffle, but I would call it slightly more difficult than a standard tarot deck, just because of the width. Okay, so there's that one. Now, a lot of people have complained about Tarot for the Great Outdoors, um, about the cardstock, and I'm not really sure why they do. To me, there's nothing wrong with this cardstock. Um, there was a mild concern that the cards don't snap back, and it's true that they're not very stiff. However, I just wanted to point out that this deck is actually thicker than this one. So it's not a thickness problem with Terror for the Great Outdoors. People complain about thin cardstock or flimsy cardstock. I think the problem is that people find this alarmingly flexible. So when you can do this with a card and not crease it, um, and it also doesn't snap back, it kind of stays in that position. Um, but again, it has not creased. There's no there's no crease on there. Um, I think that just alarms some people, and they they feel weird about it somehow. They feel like it's flimsy or it's not going to last or whatever. I don't have that fear with this cardstock. This um, is heavily plasticized, meaning that it's not just a thin coating on the front. the The plasticization of this is like penetrating all the way through. So there may be some. Uh, paper content like down inside of these cards, but really um, You know if you put water or something on this, it's just going to beat up It's not gonna it's not gonna damage the cards at all So I find this quite lovely and I really love to shuffle it because it is so flexible. It makes it very easy And again if you don't want a bow in your cards then you can alternate the way that you shuffle. You can shuffle them face up a little bit. And that will help prevent them from bowing all in one direction. Now both sets of cards are quite dense and they're they do glide so you can also overhand each of these quite well uh, quite easily I'll show you that with the guy in tarot also again because of the width this one is a little bit more awkward for me I have to make sure I clear the stack so I don't just dump these out but they both do fine so that is the guy in tarot compared with here for the great outdoors let me know what you think do you have one or both of these are you interested in getting one or both of these based on my review i'd love to know uh, i don't know when i'm going to make another video but i did just do a whole bunch of readings for valentine's day so if i have time i might share some of the spreads i used for that um, but until next time be well and i'll see you later take care bye bye